thunder roars, get indoors. Ryan, what could potentially happen if you don't? What are your chances of survival? Well, it's one of the quickest deaths you can possibly have. Um, you don't see it, you don't hear it, you don't feel it. You drop like a sack of potatoes. And how do you protect yourself? What should you do if you see in the distance a storm heading your way? Prevention is everything. You know, when thunder roars, get indoors. So you want to know the weather conditions of your area. You don't want to be out, you know, when there's an electrical thunderstorm which will hit between 3.30 th uh, in the afternoon and 6.30 in the evening. That's the most dangerous times. That's when our convective thunderstorms are, are around. So, yeah, give yourself enough time if you're hiking to get to camp. If there's a car, get inside a car. A car is the best place to be. If you don't have a car, get under a bridge or under electrical power lines. Um, but indoors is, is the ultimate place to be. So what should you do if there is a storm heading away? Well, if you get caught in an electrical thunderstorm and you've made enough bad mistakes to be in the storm itself, then... You pray. Look, yeah, you, you want to maybe get down on your haunches because you want to create a small area. Um, a lot of my lightning victims have ruptured eardrums. Maybe you want to block your ears. If you're wet, you'll have flash over. If you're dry, you die. Um, you don't want to be on top of a hill. You don't want to be under a tree. You need a substantial shelter. The best shelter is a fully enclosed metallic surface, which is known as a Gaussian cage or a Faraday cage. Lightning, why does it strike? And why does it strike where it does strike? Okay, so lightning is very complex physics. There's whole conferences where people discuss, you know, the physics of lightning. There's the dipole theory, the tripole theory. But you need to know basically that there are four types of lightning. Upward lightning, downward lightning, positive lightning, and negative lightning. And you get combinations of, of so like the most common lightning is negative downward lightning. And the way I remember this is that 90% of people are negative and down. So 90% of lightning is negative downward. But you get intercloud lightning, you get cloud to ground, ground to cloud. So, um, and you know, this is more the realm of the uh, climatologist and meteorologist. Whereas I'm an end user, I'm a forensic pathologist. I just get the dead body. And what do you look for? when you find a victim of lightning? Well, that's why we studied so long, because the pathology of trauma of lightning on the human body is quite complex. You know, you don't get what is known as crispy critters. You know, you're not like the cindered mass. The signs are actually quite subtle on the body. The good stuff's on the clothing. And what about the lightning apps that are around at the moment? Are they effective enough? What should you be looking for on that app? And if it says it's, say, two kilometers away, are you safe? Myself and Prof Jandrell wrote the guidelines for SARU, the South African Rugby Union, on what to do in a rugby match. And the best guidelines is, you know, firstly you should have what's known as a lightning umpire, someone who watches the skies, because you can't watch the game and watch the skies at the same time. So if a storm is within 20 kilometers, you're at risk. And if it's within 10 kilometers, the game should stop. So all these lightning apps actually use secondary data and Remember, having an app is better than having no app. So um, it's data, and data is information, and it can help you make better decisions in life. So look, I'm a fan of the apps. Get the apps. Um, but remember, um, when Thunder Roar is going indoors, if you can hear it, we got what's known as the 30-30 rule. So if there's 30 seconds between flash and bang, you're at risk. And then you should wait 30 minutes after the last rumble to go outdoors again. So the 30-30 rule, if you, don't, if you don't have a mobile phone, if you don't have the app, just remember the 30-30 rule. 30 seconds between flash and bang, you're at risk, and then wait 30 minutes after the last rumble to go back outdoors. And when the siren goes at a school, on a golf course, you run as fast as you can. Look, the inconvenience of stopping the game is less than the inconvenience of a dead or injured player. So I know it's a hassle, but please, you know, your life is just is worth more. And if you find a victim of lightning, a lightning strike, what should you do? So if lightning strikes and people go down, strangely enough, you get what's known as reverse triage. So in medicine, you know, normal medicine, you go to the like airways problem first, then the breathing, then the circulation problem. In lightning, you go to the deadest looking person first. They have been known to revive. Why are they so prolific, these strikes in South Africa? What happens here? Well, our death rate is actually six times higher than the rest of the world. Um, we've got a couple of theories as to why this happens. We think, you know, Zimbabwe and South Africa have got a lot of dry copies. 
and uh, this causes a lot of cloud to ground uh, flashes. So for example, on the Drakensberg escarpment, we got something like 26 flashes per square kilometer per year. So what this means is, if you've got an imaginary piece of ground, a kilometer by kilometer, we watch how many times that, that piece of ground gets struck per year. And on the Drakensberg escarpment, it gets struck 26 times per year.